All right. I guess we can kind of call this volume two. If I don't know if any of you guys actually saw my first video, but if not, it didn't really show as many challenging clips as I will be showing in this one. This is all 2100 plus at least. Uh, I can't remember any teams that were below that, but I'm not going to go over as many macros as I had before. But I'm going to go over a couple different uh, different play styles, and one of the main ones that I'll target is uh, Juke Healing, which actually saves me more than people want to believe. And it's going to go over also a couple different strategies that I have for some of the harder clips against uh, Warrior Shaman. And here we go. The first clip I'm going to show is Discipline Priest Rogue. And I'm going to show that one and Shadow Priest Rogue here in a second. But the main strategy that I have for Discipline Priest Rogue is to have as much mobility as possible. Uh, just tr try to keep moving, keep replanting your totems. Uh, there's a lot of stupid priests out there that just sit there and run around and knock over your tremor totem and other totems until they can get a fear off. But the biggest thing about this match is the fact that I'm always moving and I'm just spamming cleanse and more importantly spamming earth shield on my warrior. But the lack of wound poison actually is very key to this match because as you can see I only have to heal my warrior once and with no wound poison on him I'm actually able to heal him for quite some bit. Uh, once again, recast Earth Shield. It's very, very annoying for the priest to have to dispel while he's dying. So if you just put on that Earth Shield, that's an extra little bit of help for you. Uh, most of the time against Disciplined Priest Rogue, I actually don't even bother uh, shocking his heals because my warrior's going to DPS through it. Okay, next clip. Shadow Priest Rogue. Uh, this is a prime example of what not to do during uh, Shadow Priest Rogue or against any Rogue period. I'm going to be testing the, the rogue most of the time to see uh, how good his kicking skills are, but for the time being I'm just trying to LOS the Shadow Priest. Get away from the Shadow Priest, he just silenced me there, and this is the big thing. I cast a full heal and got kicked, and it wasn't very good, didn't like it too much, so uh, try to avoid that this match got too close for its own good and I actually just barely survived during this match, but as you can see, this is a juke right there. Just barely cast a heal, and then stop your heal, and at the top of my screen you can actually see where he blew his kick cooldown, and after that point you're free to heal up as much as you need to. Moving along to the next clip, this is once again Disciplined Priest Rogue. I caught the rogue out of stealth right there, but more importantly, I need to be away from the priest, I need to be recasting my totems, and I need to be cleansing my warrior there so wound poison uh, doesn't get stacked up. If it does, it's such a horrible mana battle, and the priest is always going to be able to outlast you. So just keep your warrior topped, watch your CCs, stay away from the priest. If you do decide to get close to the priest because you need to purge for whatever reason, make sure your tremor totem is down. I never like relying on my tremor totem, but sometimes it will save the day. Most of the time, it makes you lose matches, so keep your warrior top, spam purge. That's really self-explanatory. Uh, keep your earth shield up. My general tactic usually is to blow my bloodlust after pain suppression or sometimes through pain suppression to, uh, to assist the warrior and make sure that he actually doesn't let the priest get back fully topped. Another strategy, once again, this is horrible positioning for the map. They brought the match to the bottom, so what I usually like doing is I like shocking the priest through pain suppression so uh, my warrior doesn't have to play the game all over again. But blow bloodlust after pain suppression or sometimes through it, stay away from them. Okay, next clip. Moving along fast. This is our first Mage Rogue that I'm going to show, and Mage Rogue, depending on the position, can be incredibly hard. There's uh, a lot of strategies you can use against them, but the main one that I do no matter what is I'm actually going to be LOSing his elemental and the mage himself as much as I can. Uh, if I see a shatter combo coming and I'm locked up in a kidney shot, I, you absolutely need to trinket out of whatever he's doing at that moment. If it's a kidney shot and nothing else, uh, just try to LOS as much as you can from the mage. My warrior is actually doing quite some damage to the mage, and he's got a shield on just so mainly he can spell reflect it. Spell reflecting is good, especially uh, since the mage can't really do too much. I can't do much to help him because I'm constantly getting locked up. And just assist shocks when you can. If not, run away from that mage.
match is actually going pretty good. I decided to jump down here and be Rambo. And the Rambo part of me got the best of me because he CS'd me because I didn't have a grounding totem down. Uh, Shatter came back out, and I actually lost all of my health just like that. But thankfully, Caustic was able to get a good jump on the mage and actually save me right there. But once again, don't get put in that situation. This is also an example of what I like to do to mess with rogues is you start casting your heal just a little bit and move around. Start casting your heal again, get away from him, and it really messes with them a whole lot. So it's generally a good tactic to use. I don't ever heal the first time. And once again, new clip. This is Warlock Rogue. Actually, I don't usually have too many problems with this team, but somebody wanted to see it, and these guys are actually targeting me for once. So, start out, try to get your shield on yourself as fast as you can. This was actually a really close match. I blew my Nature Swiftness very late in the match, but you have to live through their cooldowns. There was already a spell lock right there, and he's going to death coil me soon after this. The rogue was actually kind of smart. He wasn't using his kick, so I popped my Battle Master Trinket, decided to NS heal right here because they have no more cooldowns, and this is when I started getting really close. Uh, right about here, if I did not stop that heal, and have the rogue kick, the match would have been done. And my warrior is already very low with dots on him, so he probably would have lost if that were a 1v1 match. So, once again, kicking, dodging that kick is incredibly important. So, that's pretty much what won the match, and a match that was incredibly close. So, just a good example. Um, from what I remember, this is uh, Warlock Druid. And this is one of the matches that's kind of hard depending on how the Warlock and the Druid play. So you really have to be on top of your shocks. Uh, this actually, don't mind me healing and clicking while healing. I actually fixed that. That was a chronic problem that I had for a long time was using my mouse button to heal people. But I got rid of all that with macros. Uh, aside from that, these guys were pretty smart. They had uh, a lot of great fears on me. If you notice, the Warlock has nothing on me except Curse of Tongues. And the main thing that you want to try doing is actually not getting CC'd the entire match. If you notice when that druid popped into his bear form, I got as close as I could to him just so he couldn't do anything else except pop back out and cycle me. Um, Caustic just took out the pet there, so this is actually an important time when you try to stop the Warlock from summoning. But at the same time, uh, Druid's going to be locking up my warrior, and at the same time, I have to be watching Fears. And one Fear gets off, he summons a new pet. One thing to always remember is whenever a new pet comes out, you have to be ready for another spell lock, and spell lock's back off of cooldown. So there it is, another spell lock, another Fear. He's just trying to drain my warrior and CC me as much as possible. It's not working out too well for him because of the lack of CC that they have on me. So uh, make sure your warrior does not use his pummel at the same time that you use your shock because it's very crucial that you don't waste shocks for whatever reason. Anyways, they're playing incredibly defensive right now just because he has no pets. There's not too much they could do. So they're trying to get my warrior away from them. So this... Uh, this comes to be an important time right here when you actually need to be on top of your CCs once again. Uh, watch whatever the Druid's casting, at the same time, watch the Warlock. Here's a Cyclone Shock, you have to be ready for the Fear coming, get a Grounding Totem down, put Wind Fury back down fast. Uh, he's trying to Fear me again so they could go summon, so I shock that, and the match goes on. My Frap's actually cut out right there, I'm really sorry about that but uh, my computer lags every once in a while. Next clip, where Shaman. Pretty straightforward. All you need to do is purge that Shami. You need to stay away at the same time, play the game with the warrior, the juke game. It's very fun to play. Uh, aside from that, just be purging that Earth Shield. Uh, cooldowns are a big, uh, big problem too. If you blow your Bloodlust too early, it's just going to get purged and you're probably going to lose the match. I actually don't have Searing Totem down right here, which is a big mistake, but we won't get into that too much. Searing Totem eats up Grounding Totem pretty hardcore. Aside from that, this is where I decided to blow my Lust after I had my Purges down, and I'm at a safe level to where I can actually start healing, and the biggest part here is now shocking that Shami. 
one shock is all you need and that one shock basically wins the match and will kill that shaman in a hurry that's why I like to be out in the open against these guys I like testing my skill against the other warrior at the same time and uh, I don't know splitting up is an okay strategy sometimes it works but it's just basically a mana battle then and you can't really give any shamis as much so I try to stay out in the open or else get close to that shami so I know my shocking skills are always usually gonna be a little bit better than theirs uh, okay next clip this is actually a really fun clip uh, they're from my server and we actually set up this match uh, it's another 2200 rated uh, warrior shaman and this is actually really fun they decided to split up right here there was nothing too much I could do with uh, with the hamstrings so I tried assisting my warrior a little bit there but Angelic is always good at running away so he's trying to do that he purges my earth shields and they blew their heroism first and at this time I start getting incredibly low so I pop less just to survive rear shielded myself stayed away from the shami then uh, Angelic started worrying about his health right here so this is a split up time you really need and to be on top time of when you... watching your warriors pummels and making sure he doesn't pummel you for whatever reason so moving right along um, I'm gonna try at this point now that I have stable enough health and I just juke Linky Zor uh, I'm just gonna run over to Angelic now and I'm going to be just purging his earth shield help out my warrior a little bit just try to get over there slowly and once you do get his gift of the Naru at the same time very good and next thing you know GG that's pretty much the match so he actually Linky is one of the few warriors that I actually have a real hard time uh, juking because I've played against him so much I've probably played him about 10 different times so um, I don't know he's pretty much caught on to me but every once in a while I could do good against him like, he, almost, he almost kills me right there he's, he's a very good warrior I really enjoy playing against him that's why we scheduled this little matchup so we actually won uh, we played them a few times we lost once to them uh, I, I don't know I like them moving on uh, this is our first Warrior Druid that I'm going to show, and Warrior Druid is a very, very fun match and straightforward. You have to watch that first Cyclone. I covered this mainly in my first video, but this is once again a 2150 rated team, and you just have to stay close to that Druid. There's nowhere he can go right now because he cannot Feral Charge. He's going to try. He decides to pop out in Cyclone. Stop that. My warrior is on top of everything. I'm on top of my grounding totem actually also right there. Even though I got feared, my grounding totem was down. And as long as you stop these cyclones while your warrior is near, you can get very lucky. And as long as that druid's at a caster form like that, you're putting a lot of pressure on him. You're wasting, even though you're wasting your mana doing max rank shocks, at the same time, he's wasting his mana shapeshifting and trying to survive. So it actually uh, evens out pretty well. If you play incredibly offensive, you will never lose to Warrior Druid, no matter how good they are. All right, this is actually a very fun clip. This is um, this is Warlock Rogue, and we're playing incredibly defensive the entire time during this game. Uh, my warrior has a shield on most of the time, and there's nothing I could do here. He got my warrior got a couple dots on him. He's ticking down actually. If I pop out, I get sapped. So it was a bad position for us to start out in completely. But once again, uh, it's all about their cooldowns. Here's a spell lock. I tried to war stomp. My war stomp got resisted, but my tremor is down. Uh, I'm going to start healing with Curse of Tongues. It's a big pain in the ass, but you just have to just go through it. Hopefully, the match doesn't last too long. Uh, he just got my grounding totem. They screwed up when they blinded and feared me at the same time. But anywho, just stop those fears. You cannot get feared, period. One fear is the end of the match. I actually got a resisted fear right there because he resisted my shock. And next thing you know, I'm playing catch up even harder and harder. So once again, this is a very strenuous little mana battle here. Uh, Warrior still got a shield on. I just keep him, uh, just try to keep him healed up as much as you can. Stop those fears. Uh, talk to your warrior, see when he can interrupt, make sure you guys don't waste your interrupts at the same time, and just live. All their cooldowns are gone now, so you just have to kind of live through it. His death coil is gone, his, all, the only thing he can do is fear and lock up the warrior. I actually ran out of mana here. This is when I did not have my mana tight spec. It was uh, very experimental at the beginning at 2.4. But anyways, um, 
I don't know. I guess I'll let you guys watch the end of this. Damn you, Cloak of Shadows. I almost had that one too. It was pretty close. I don't know. I think I could have got away with it. Alrighty. Next clip. Uh, don't know. Let's find out in a second here. What do we have? We have uh, Warrior Druid again. And this is a pretty interesting clip as well. I'm actually going to switch to my Warrior's perspective after this video is done. But I'm just going to show you the general Warrior Druid strat and let you watch the match and show both sides of the of our team, both my Warrior and myself, because once again, Fraps lagged up, and this this clip actually has a real fun ending, so I think you guys will enjoy it. Upcoming on Breakbeat Chaos Recordings, released as a double A side with Black Tarantula, the Pendulum Fresh collaboration on the flip side. Pendulum's album, Hold You Color, follows in June. Get in. Before that, something deeply sexual and filthy dirty from Peaches and Louis Austin. Grab My Shaft is the title. And we're playing that <laughs> to set the tone for tonight's assault on the senses. So then, who's it gonna be? Now, if only my warrior listened when I told him to jump down so I could heal him, this we wouldn't have been put in that situation. But pretty cool little frost shock at the end there, and I was screaming after I realized what happened, where I was stuck with the resto druid, 
in uh, in the arena, which is pretty fun, but at the same time not so fun. We ended up rolling for the match and we won, but it's a good little ending clip. And I guess that's all uh, the clips I have right now. I'll be sure to make another one if I get good feedback, so uh, support my thread please, and thank you for watching.